Yo, what is happening everyone? What is cooling? My name is G Sling. I'm doing my thing and we got a special guest today, none other than Bro Schmo. What is happening, man? What's going on? Hey, you right there. That intro is is crazy. Well, you ain't even done yet. Because you want to know a little bit about me? I'm telling you right now, you ain't even heard. Because first off, my name is Gareth. I'm 28 years old. I'm addicted to mock drafts. And I used to live in a car down by the river. And you're probably saying to yourself, well, G-Sling, why'd you live in a car down by the river? Well, let me tell you. First off, if you pick Malik Willis number one overall, the Detroit Lions fans will probably tell you that you're going to end up living in a car down by the river. Especially John Kempler. What up, John? He's probably out there like, oh, you're crazy, man. But, uh, oh, also, I did not eat a steady diet of government cheese because there's no refrigeration when you're living in a car down by the river. I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> anyway, what, what, what are we doing today? I think we got something going on. We got a mock draft today, and we're going to go through this and see what we got. So, I mean, shaking up new order, all these sort of things. We got the Carolina Panthers at number two overall. Houston's still at number one. They're, man, just keep losing. That's kind of what I'm saying. Get Bryce Young. So we'll see how it all goes. But uh, if you want to start it all out, he won the coin toss, too. We did a coin toss before this because we were trying to keep it rocking. And he, he got me beat on it. So he's going to get the number one overall That's pick. right. I elect to receive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, which side of the field? No, I get to pick the side of the field. I think I'll go with the east side. I think I like the east side. No, actually, west side. I'm more of a Tupac fan. But let's, uh, <laughs> let's roll with it. Uh, number one pick. All right, Sorry. Houston Texans, right? Uh, this one's easy for me. I'm going to go with my top quarterback, Bryce Young. Uh, for some people, obviously, the size is going to be a concern. But for me, uh, it ain't the size of the boat. It's the motion in the ocean. And I I don't think there's a quarterback with a better motion than Bryce Young. This man is Patrick Mahomes-esque in the backfield. And, uh, yeah, no, if you're Houston Texans, you're picking one overall. Like, you're not going to be doing that to – like, you're getting a quarterback. Davis Mills, fine backup. Get your quarterback. For sure. I mean, and if you think about it, too, he's a little small on the boat. But even if Moby Dick came out to try to get him, it ain't happening, Captain, because he's going to be that dude. Ah, you know, he's got the pirate cap. He'll put the team on his back. He's Greg Jennings. I know who do. Bryce Young, I think he's the best quarterback. I, I think he's up there with, with Joe Burrow, level of prospect. I mean, may not be that level, but he's definitely right there. Like, dude is unbelievable. I think at least, but yeah, no, pretty foregone conclusion. I think he's in the uh, vicinity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, it's unbelievable, man. But number two, this is tough for me. I uh, I mean, kind of in a way, not really. You got to take a quarterback. Carolina, you need to improve at that position. You've been through everybody. P.J. Walker, I know you got Golden Corral, Matt Corral. Maybe he can be somebody, but I'm not going to bank the future on that. You've tried Baker, Quaker, Oatmeal Products, and <laughs> Sam Darnold. You've tried everything you can. You got to get yourself a franchise quarterback. Hopefully, C.J. Stroud can be the guy. So I'm going to select C.J. Stroud at number two overall. Yeah, they need somebody, man. The right. offense line's doing better, though. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's there's a lot of promise on that Carolina Panthers yeah. team. There really is. I, I mean, hopefully they bring Bradley, Bradley Boozman back, but overall that offensive line has really done a good job, and Aquanu looks so good, man. I mean, he, he'll finish continuing those technical refinements to his game, but he's just so powerful. And uh, you got DJ Moore, and you got some weapons. Terrence Marshall's been playing better, and – LaVisca, if he can stay healthy, can be a good screen target, if nothing else, because that dude could be a run. I say he could be a running back at some point, I feel like. He he reminds me of Cordell Patterson, a player like that even. But he's a real, he's, he's tough to tackle. Yeah. He, he, oh, well, I got the Bears here, and uh, like you, you would like to go, I guess, offensive line or receiver here. Uh, in theory, when you're picking third overall, then – uh, just take the best player on the board. So I'm I'm staring down Will Anderson. I'm staring down Jalen Carter, and I'm trying to think what guy would Matt Eberflus what what would rock his jollies? And I think it would be Jalen Carter. He would love a cat like this. He would love uh, a nice interior presence. I I really think their interior is a lot weaker than what they currently have in the edge room. And I know that they just got rid of Robert uh, Quinn. But honestly, Travis Gibson, he he's shown a little bit. And in a class that's very, I would say, uh, rich at the edge rusher position, it's somewhere you could go later on in the draft or even pull in free agency. Jalen Carr just feels like uh, a Matt Eberflus guy. 
I agree with that. And he's like the one one I also like the little jolly Christmas. Hey, we got like 32 days now until Christmas or something like that. It's getting wild. But well, this is yeah, Christmas he, for these teams. <laughs> heck yeah, I'm serious. And he's like the one one too in this prospect. Aaron, yeah. The defensive tackle class is good, but Jalen Carter is like insane. I mean, Will Anderson's really good. You're not going to find Will Anderson in the round two, but I yeah. feel like you can find a really good edge player in round number two, whereas – Matt Eberflus, three tech. He loves that position. I gotta get Jalen Carter. He's salivating. Please get me Jalen Carter. But uh, on to the Raiders here at number four. The Raiders. This is an easy one for me. Actually, I mean, it is a little tougher because you say, well, you still have Chandler Jones. Maybe this is a trade spot for them. But for me, you just take the best available player. Even though I think corner probably is a bigger need, and I see them realistically still winning more games and probably getting a corner. I'm going to go ahead and select Will Anderson. I can't pass up on him. You can always have Chandler Jones and Will Anderson and Mad Max off the edge. And Chandler Jones has not been great this year. I was watching the film on, on him, and he, hopefully he gets a little bit better, but he's got, to get, he's got to win more, man. It's just Mad Max on that defensive line. They're one of the worst pressure teams in the NFL right now, so adding Will Anderson could definitely help them out. Get somebody besides Mad Max, man. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, dude, yeah, it's... Chandler's kind of been a wash at this point. And and what's going to help the corner position is pass rush, which they haven't had all year. So, yeah, yeah no, I like that pick a lot. And uh, now I have the Seattle Seahawks. This is via the Denver Broncos because Russ ain't cooking no more. So, uh, yeah. What is going on with Denver right now, man? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's just wild. They have the best defenses in the NFL, and they still just – we keep bungling games over and over it, again. It I don't it, it like the play calling's bad. Russ is bad. Like I yeah I don't even know. You know if this team has if they scored eighteen points or more in every or let's just say eighteen points in every game this year they would be eight and two. That's wild. That's how good the defense is. But I got the Somebody Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Stop. So the Seattle Seahawks. I'm reaching. Uh, I think this is a team that uh, you're looking at a guy like Miles Murphy, man, a guy who has good versatility to him, a guy that for the most part plays either over top of the tackle or to the outside, but he's got physical tools out the wazoo. He's not necessarily the most uh, polished guy yet, but you look at that upside, you look at a need you have at pass rusher uh, just to get more young guys in there. I don't think necessarily uh, Nuoso is a, a, a future there. You, you typically look at Daryl Taylor and um, boy, Mafe, and you kind of hope those guys maybe start to, uh, produce or at least produce a little bit more but go ahead throw miles murphy nice versatile body type as well so you don't necessarily have to have less pass rushers on the field if you're going to include him you could still have a bevy of those guys on the field yeah it makes tons of sense like i think daryl taylor is a good player like he's a good rotational piece yes. a good number three and Boye Mafe definitely looks like a long-term starter there, but they need a number one guy. Like, they've been lacking that for so long, and Miles Murphy would be that guy. And as you were talking about, too, he has so much versatility. Seattle loves those guys, man. They tried it with uh, Coy or, uh, LJ Coyer. They've tried it with so many oh, gosh, different guys, yeah. Robinson, you name it. So it's like Miles Murphy is the best one out of all, but he's just a different human being. It's a different specimen. So it makes just too much sense. Um, but on to the Lions. What do we do, Lions fans? Oh, this is a tricky one. You know my button. I want to pick Anthony Richardson so bad. If it were me, if it were doing what I want to do, I want Anthony Richardson so bad. I love Anthony Richardson. We'll probably talk about him a little bit more later down the line. I'm not going to go that route. I'm going to take the top corner, which is a tough one. It, it, it's a, it's a three-way race right now. You could even say four-way race between like – Cam Smith, Kelly Ringo, Porter, and Gonzalez. Like, those yeah. three guys are really – it's getting good, man. And a guy who I think is underrated is Tredavis Hodges Hop Tomlinson. I think he's really good, too. I like him a lot. There's some good corners later in the draft. But I'm going to go ahead and stick it out with Kelly Ringo. I think just from an overall standpoint, athleticism profile, the dude – Made another heck of a play this week versus Will Levis, kind of underbaiting him there and throwing that little sideline or to the end zone and picking off another huge play from Ringo. So I feel like, hey, the dude, they need cornerback help. You improve it. Ringo and uh, Jeff Okuda on the outside, and you can kind of roll from there. Right. Well, I'm here with the Houston Texans once again. Took Bryce Young for him. Uh, now I'm looking at this one, and initially, like, my thought was, okay, Brian Brazi, you know, that's kind of – 
obvious pick here that this team needs pass rush. Uh, then Jordan Addison actually came to mind with the whole Brandon Cooks uh, thing. Se seeming like he doesn't want to be there anymore, that he just wants to be on a winning team for once. Uh, but I think what I'm actually going to do, uh, I'm going to go with a guy that I think is going to go a lot higher than uh, maybe maybe that some people think. Uh, Tyree Wilson out of Texas Tech. <sighs> Go. Yeah, yes, he. I love Terry. Yeah, dude, the dude is like a really good athlete for two, what is he like two seventy five? He's super yeah. lanky, 6'6". He's like thirty six inch arms almost. Yeah, That's exactly. Wild. Yeah, he's basically he's a like value brand Travon Walker, except for coming into this class, he has all of the production opposed to Travon Walker coming in with little to no production. Wilson has that production. He might not be the athlete. That Walker is, but you look at that production, and you're just like, my gosh, this guy has been putting out banger after banger after banger. Yeah, yeah. it sucks he uh, had to finish the season, you know, with that injury or whatever. But he's gonna be a monster. I'm not worried about it at all. What was it like a? I it wasn't like a bad injury or something. I just know he's he's. I think he's done for this season, right? I don't. I forget what, what he had going on with him, but yeah, it's, it's a foot. Man. It's a small injury. Yeah, it's a but, foot injury. I don't think it'll keep yeah, him out of right, foot, uh, yeah. like it'll that's, probably keep yeah, him out process. of like an All Star Bowl, but it, it won't keep him off like the combine or anything. Yeah, he's unbelievable though, man. I, I'm a huge fan. I think he's gonna go top ten, man. I really do. Yeah, same. On to the Steelers, though we go, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, it comes down to offensive line, and also you got to look at the corner position, in my opinion. I think those are probably their two biggest needs. You got to find some youth in the secondary. You also need to find some guys who can come in there. They've kind of neglected the offense a little bit, you know, in terms of adding and drafting guys higher. They've helped it out with James Daniel and so forth. You know, Mason Cole's been okay this year. Like their offense line, I guess, is not the worst thing, but improving the tackle position is so important. And I think I'm going to lean that way, even though I do like going corner as well, because like you look at their cornerback room and you got to add some youth in there. I'm going to stick with the tackle position though. Fashanu, if you're, it's just, it, it is so difficult because people are going to say, Peter Scaronsi, do you play him at tackle? Is he a guard at the yeah. next level? That conversation is going to continue to drown on throughout this entire draft process, and I, I don't know what to do yet, but I think you got to give Peter Skaronsky a shot at left tackle, and if you're Pittsburgh Steelers, you need just good offense alignment in general. Make sure you're helping Kenny Pickett, man. Give him the ticket to help improve this team. So I'm going to go Peter Skaronsky for the boring pick, but I think it's the pick that they need to be tr looking to address that offense line some more. Yeah, I don't mind that. I like that. Uh, Skaronsky is going to be a bit of an enigma. Like, uh, are they gonna like our team's gonna want to like veer away from him just because they want to go with guys that have that length that might be better athletes like Fashanyu or Paris Johnson? Yeah. So that's gonna be the question. It's, yeah, it's gonna be a little tricky, but yeah, Jacksonville yeah. Jaguars, man, I'm excited for this one actually. Ooh. I like the. Oh, I, I can't wait. I like this pick. Listen, Trevor Lawrence back at Clemson. What did he like? Big bodied receivers. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going Quentin Johnston. Going to pair that up with Calvin Ridley. Going to pair that up with Christian Kirk in the slot. You got Zay Jones. That's great depth. Suddenly your receiver room looks a heck of a lot better. <laughs> oh, yeah. This was what I was thinking about. Like, uh, I, I love this comp. This is a perfect like fit, I feel like, for what the Jaguars need. They don't have that specialist, that T. Higgins guy on the outside. Yeah. But he was so good at throwing to it, Clemson, and, and you get Quinn Johnson, he's going to be that and more. So, it, yeah, that's that's like a, a you know, Match.com Harmony connection <laughs> right there. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, <laughs> they've got it all tied together. So, <laughs> anyway, on to the Eagles. Here we go. Philadelphia, September 10 overall. And with this one here, let's take a look at the board. I'm going to take Anthony Rich. No, I'm joking. Uh, let's see. Who do I want to go after? <laughs> Eagles fans going to throw riots at me. Uh, okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and lean towards adding some more defense here. And I think it's between adding another corner or we could look. They, I mean, they really need secondary. Probably not going to take a safety, though, this early. So I think we're going. Ooh, Brazi is still on the board. And I know they how he loves those trench players, man. I do like Brazi a lot. And he's fallen at this point. I might have to take Brazi. There's some good corners, too. Hmm, what do I want to do? Let me make sure. Let's see. The Eagles are picking at 31 later. Do I think they can get a good corner over a good defensive tackle? 
that is a good question, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and take, wow, this is actually a tough one, Brazil. I did not expect Brian Brazil to be here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lock that in, take Brian Brazil, pair him along there. You know, you gotta go ahead and continue to improve those trenches. Him and uh, you know Jordan Davis can be a good group for the long haul. You got Mel Williams rolling in that rotation. So I'm gonna, hey, they value the trenches. That seems like more than the corner position, which is totally understandable. That defensive line for years has been formidable. So yeah, Brian Brazi, let's make it easy. Yeah, I like it. Uh, corner for the Cardinals. That corner <laughs> position, awful, 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 awful. God, awful. I'm happy that I get a. How do you plethora. really feel about it? Tell me how you really feel. Well. <laughs> Listen, if the defense was a shoe and I was Marco Wilson, I'd be chucking it downfield. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I hope Marco Wilson's in the chat somewhere. I know, man, right? <laughs> There's a fake Marco Wilson out there somewhere, too. I know that in the yeah. chat room, but, uh, oh, man, it's but, crazy. Yeah, this team, they need talent at the corner position. They, they need depth. They need competition. And I really think <sighs> – this is kind of tough just because, like, really, it's like you're picking which corner do you feel fits the best. Uh, and you, I, I honestly don't believe – I don't know if this coaching staff even survives uh, after the season. Like, so yeah, – That's something I've been wondering, too. Like, I think Cliff Kingsbury is on the way out. Golly, I thought he should have been on the way out last year. <laughs> Cl yeah, Steve Klein. How did he get an extension? Like – I don't understand. They need a couple of linebackers. You know, they they just don't. I don't know, man. It's been wild. They're using Isaiah Simmons as a as a slot corner now, which is actually better. I actually do like him as like a slot corner hybrid linebacker, but I don't know. It's just wild there. Niederman's been lining up there with Zavian Collins at linebackers. They're still trying to figure the linebacker position. Out. Yeah, man. It's not like they spent two first round picks on it. But uh, I'm going to go with Joey Porter. He, he's a great athlete. He's got plus length. And I think uh, I if, any, if anything, like let's say Vance Joseph is still the coach here or the DC, uh, then I think Porter is the type of guy he would kind of go for. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, and I think Joey Porter's really – They'll figure it out, you know, with their scheme and everything like that. Depending on, you know, if they bring back Byron Murphy, of course, being a free agent. They just need cornerback room help no matter how you shake it. Whether it's Cam Smith, Joey Porter, you know, Christian Gonzalez, it doesn't matter. They just need help in all ways. Yep. So I love that pick. But uh, Packers at number 12, what should we do? You got to go ahead and get the receiver position. Probably won't happen. They'll probably go after either a tackle or an edge rusher. I have a guess they'll probably go after a safety even. Who knows? But um, maybe a running back. Yeah, they're probably looking at Bijan Robinson or, uh, you know, so, what's his name from uh, Tavir Thomas from Utah. They probably see him and they're just salivating on him too. But I'm going to go take – dude, that guy is just – he's huge, man. He's a freaking he, powerhouse. He's a big boy. <laughs> he is. Oh, my gosh. But I'm going to go ahead and take a receiver. I, I love Jackson Smith, the Jigba. I know the injury sort of thing. I think he'd be a perfect fit in that offense. Jordan Addison, though, is it's it's really close. Him and Jackson Smith, the Jigba. I, I'd kind of go toss up between those guys. I'm going to go Jordan Addison, though. I think what he can bring, Aaron Rodgers, can be that separator all three levels of the field. So go ahead and get another playmaker. Christian Watson, you know, he's coming along maybe – Maybe Dubs and Watson might be something, and then they draft the tight end. They'll probably look at Darnell Washington or someone like that in the second round to replace Mercedes Lewis. But I'm I'm gonna stick with the the receiver pick for the right for the time being until like, they prove me that the, the they're okay at the position. Maybe they draft they trade for somebody or something. But yeah, that's why I'm rolling with Jordan Addison. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, Detroit Lions. Um, Jared Goff sucks. <laughs> Oh man, he went there. He yeah, went there. Uh, <laughs> Will Levis is gonna go. I firmly believe he's at least going top fifteen. He might go top ten, and I don't even love uh, Will uh, Willis, but the dude has all the physical tools: play strength, mobility. Uh, he's got a strong arm. He throws with velocity, quick release. He operates a NFL, uh, or at least a translatable offense the nfl with his past coordinators being former 49ers coach and now um rams oc so it's like there's a lot going his way there and coaches are gonna look at him and be like 
we can figure it out between the ears with Will Levis. We can we can coach the decision making. So gonna move off of that terrible contract with Goff that enables you to go out, get free agents on the defense, get nice veteran talent, and you're gonna take Will Levis here. Especially with the Colts uh taking picking next. It's like, eh, you know what? Let's just let's just go ahead and uh swipe that. <laughs> Dude, hundred percent. That's that's perfect pick. I, I think you got to get a quarterback. I, you really do. And I know people, I've talked to so many people, oh, well, Jared Goff isn't the problem. Dude, Jared Goff isn't the solution. How about exactly. that? Exactly. <laughs> if you want to win a Super Bowl, if you want to get to the playoffs and be a serious contender year in, year out, just you gotta find somebody. It's just, and you oh, bet man, on guys like, with tools like this. I know, yeah. And, you know, as you were saying, like he's got a, he's got a really good release. His arm strength is crazy. He's got all the tools and we've seen like guys who go to the NFL level they surround him with more talent and they've got talent at Detroit with JMO and you know Amon Ra the wing dragon and all this we were talking about Yu-Gi-Oh earlier dude I call Amon Ra St. Brown the wing dragon of Raw I don't know why <laughs> but I always he's always he's the wing dragon of Raw out there but dude is unbelievable so you know hey they've got some playmakers for Will Levis I love the pick and speaking of quarterback and you were just talking about a guy with a quick release and all the tools Anthony Richardson, I'm a huge fan. He's like a freaking, I was watching uh, Jurassic World uh, the other day, and he's like the Velociraptor. When you let him loose out in the cages, he's gone, man. He's shifting, he's hunting, he's going, he's going, and he's just, dude is unbelievable, the tools he has. Anthony Richardson, to me, I actually like him above, he's my number two quarterback at the time. Yes, he may not be ready day number one, but maybe you keep Matt Ryan for the time being, or you can figure something out there. But the Colts need a quarterback. So they keep on trying to do, they've had what, like six or seven different starters over the past six or seven years. So every single year they've had a new starter. Let's get somebody here in the long haul in Indy. I just, I love Anthony Richardson, man. I think you just give him some time, but all the, he looks better to me than even Will Levis or I, th- I think he's better than CJ Stroud. I think he's got more upside. So It's I, not I hard to look better than Will Levis yeah, right now. True. And I mean, another guy with all these tools and just a rare uh, athlete for the quarterback yeah. position. Like, yeah. he goes to the right the coach that's like, man, we could, we're mm-hmm. going to gear our offense around this guy. I mean, Craig Roman did it with Lamar Jackson. So, exactly. I think, honestly, both Will Levis and Anthony Richardson, both guys can work out, but you just need to have a game plan for him. And I think Richardson, especially, you just need to kind of play like a heavy quarterback power sort of thing and i think indianapolis would be a perfect fit for him with jonathan taylor and they'd be an unstoppable run team early on in his career while he's developing as a passer so we'll see but i just hope they can get somebody at the quarterback position man it's been a revolving door oh yeah uh the atlanta falcons man this one's interesting because uh my first indica- like uh the first thing i'm like thinking is like okay maybe let uh, like the pass rush value, I don't think it's necessarily there. I mean, there's maybe a couple of guys, but uh, the value at corner is just much better. But I also think, man, you got these offensive tackles slide in, and like Jake Matthews is probably a guy that you could maybe uh, move on from later on or uh, kick into guard, or even uh, it's not like they don't know what they're doing with uh, Caleb McGarry yet, and he's having a fine year. So it's like, man, tackle – kind of looking sexy at this point but i think i'm just gonna stick with trying to get the defense a bit better i'm gonna go with cam smith i think dean Pease would love a guy like cam smith yeah it makes a lot of sense and you know like who do they have darren hall right now playing on the outside which he's been okay he had a little bit of a rough week versus the bears he like stumbled now uh you know justin fields overthrew him a little bit but Dude, Cam Smith, really good player, and him, him and uh, AJ rocking out on the, the pretty good group. Darren Hall in the slot or something like that. If you don't re-sign uh, Isaiah Oliver, that'd be a pretty good, a pretty good corner group, man. It's good secondary. But uh, you know, let's go on to the Chargers here at number 16 overall. And you're right, dang, all these offensive linemen. I know the Chargers keep keep selecting offensive linemen, but I might have to take another one, man. Oh, this is a tough one. There are some really good ones on the board. Let's see. They do need a right tackle. I love adding another weapon though for them. Jackson Smith. They need a deep threat though. So maybe I'll wait until the second. You know, we'd wait until the second. In this case scenario, I'd wait until the second round. Again, if if you saw Quentin Johnson or Jordan Addison, that would pull the trigger for me for the Chargers. But in this case, those being off the board, I wouldn't gonna go. I'm not gonna go there. 
Other areas that I'm looking at for the Chargers could be the linebacker position. You do have Trenton Simpson available, defensive tackle. Everyone's off the board here. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to go best available. And for me, I'm going to take offensive line as much as they keep going next to the offensive line. Hey, why not, man? I'm going to take Olu Fashanu here. There's always a projection when you're going with these guys. Can they play right tackle if they're for left tackles? That is a good question. But I'm going to take him anyway because, hey, I'm going to roll the dice. I play poker, and we'll do it. Olu Fashano, please be able to play right tackle for us. All right, Washington Commanders. And I feel like the Commanders are in a position where they could really just take the best player available. Um, it's going to be interesting with the defense, like, what they want to do with the back end there. I feel like they, uh, especially with the uh, value on the board at the uh, corner position. Uh, and honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to consider safety maybe as well. I'm not going to lie to you. Cause, yeah, uh, just yeah. Cause what they've been having Bobby McCain, uh, kind of be their deep guy there. And, mm -hmm. I don't think he's probably the uh, the answer. Then again, uh, Derek Forrest, a uh, guy I like that at Cincinnati, is actually having a pretty solid year there. So maybe I'll just stick with the corner position uh, and go with probably again like the the uh, we we were talking about how there's like four corners that everyone just has a different order in. So with Christian Gonzalez being the last of those four. I feel like I should just go ahead and snag him. Made Bruce Feldman's freaks list. Uh, has had a really good year after the Georgia game. So, yeah, let's go Christian Gonzalez. Yeah, makes a ton of sense. Get some more cornerback help. Replace William Jackson. And yeah. That'd be an upgrade. Honestly, that'd probably be an upgrade. Be an upgrade. <laughs> oh, man. And Dan Snyder. Oh, he's probably threatening me right now as a Jets fan. Oh, you better not uh, do so. I don't know what he's doing out there. He's probably going to. He's got blackmail on me out there somewhere, Dan Snyder. Oh, my gosh. Hopefully they still have the team. <laughs> but I know Washington Commanders fans right now are just – that whole situation's wild. But on oh, to the yeah, Jets at number 18. And I think – you know, I you know, with this one, I, I keep going back and forth with the offensive line. I'm still trying to figure things out because you got such a weird situation on how you want to play it out because what do you do with Mekhi Becton? Is Elijah Vera Tucker your long-term right tackle? And you know you you still have you still have some guys you got to figure maybe center Connor McGovern might be a bigger need so I'm I'm thinking maybe second round is where we go at that position still kind of up in the air we need safety help in a major way <sighs> linebacker could be interesting with Kawan Alexander and then you're also probably going to cut C J Mosley so it's it just it's a really tough one Joe Douglas though valuing those trenches. I'm going to go after a linebacker prospect though here. I'm going to take Trenton Simpson, change it up. A lot of times I go Brian Branch. I do think Brian Branch is insane and in what he could bring to. Maybe a little redundant if you wanted to put him and Michael Carter. They could both play in the slot. But, yeah, I'm going to take a linebacker, no, a Trenton Simpson, to kind of be that replacement for, uh, you know, that whole linebacking position. Just need more more help there. So we're going to we're gonna rock out with Trenton Simpson. Plus he can kind of even roll off the edge if they wanted to utilize him creatively in blitz packages. Mm -hmm. Now, I fully believe Tom Brady is going to be with the Bucks next year. Uh, I feel like the first thing I would want to do here is, okay, well, we got Jamel Dean and Sean Murphy, but in his free agents, though, corner position, it's kind of flown off the board. So maybe edge, because like their pass rush has been kind of poop this year uh, outside of Shaq uh, Barrett. Uh, and you really, you have your plethora of edge talent you could select with this pick. Also, you could go with um, an interior prospect in uh, Osiris Torrance to really solidify. I believe it's the left guard, whatever Shaq, uh, was it Shaq uh, Mason? Mason? Yeah, whatever he's not playing, I think he's usually right guard. He's right guard, yeah. Yeah, okay, I thought Luke, so. Luke Godek is over at left, and then you have... Um, yeah, they've been uh, bringing Robert in Hainsley some other cat. Yeah, yeah Hainsley has actually not been that bad this year. I yeah, thought he's, he's been, been pretty decent. solid. It's been really that... For his first year. So. Yeah. It's been that one guard spot, whether it's Godeki or whoever they put in there. So it's like, okay, maybe that's a thought as well. But, man... I really think Michael Mayer is just too talented to pass up here. 
Oh. Uh, I know that they got they got Kate on it, who's shown some things, but I don't think he's a tight end one. Cameron Brait, see you later, yeah, dude. Alligator. Michael Mayer, yeah, Michael Mayer, getting another. You get, and this is like two birds with one stone. You get a guy that will be Tom Brady's best friend, and you get a very good run blocker as well. I, I think the dude's top fifteen. So does. I just can't see him falling out of the top 20. Yeah. Well, hey, Tom Brady might be the the uh, senator, but Michael Mayer could be the mayor, I guess, of Tampa. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that would be a huge pickup there. Him and Kate Auden. Oh, my goodness. That would be a fun one. That would be pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> On to the Denver Broncos here at number 20 overall. The offensive lineman falling, man, it's so tough, man. I hate projecting guys to switch over to right tackle. I almost feel like Dewan Jones in the second round would be like a perfect fit for them. Other areas that the Denver Broncos could look at, I'm trying to help improve this offense because they really do need it. Uh, you have to make projections. Uh. There's still some good edge players on the board. We can always add someone else in there, even though Baron Browner and figure that out. Hopefully they'd be okay. Randy Gregory, though, just keeps getting injured. I feel like he's just so injury prone. He's a great player when he's on the field. He just keeps getting injured. So oh, yeah. that's a tough one. They could use interior defense alignment as well. Nobody I'm seeing at this moment that I would that I would probably take at this spot, even though there's some good guys probably in the second round or whatever. So I think I'm going to go back to the offensive line well. Paris Johnson, he showed he played right right guard. Maybe he can play right tackle or maybe he can work airball. He probably wouldn't want to do that, but... I'm going to take Paris Johnson. I feel like he's the best player available at this point and just get yourself some more offensive line help. And hopefully Russell Wilson and offensive coordinator, they can reshuffle some things and do some something better on, on identity offensively wise next year. <laughs> find something. Oh goodness. yeah. Now with this pick, uh, I'm going Osiris Torrance for the Seattle Seahawks. I really like this. this. is a team that wants to run the ball, though, with Geno, man. They know they could pass it. But that interior group, Gabe Jackson passed his prime. Uh, I No. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? He, he's an no. old pro. <laughs> what did you uh, say? Gabe Jackson. Uh, what can I say? But uh, <laughs> even Damian Lewis has kind of been like, meh. So I think going with the top guard, he's probably the only interior player really truly worth a first-round pick at this point. So there you go. You get a new best friend for Kenneth Walker. Oh, man, dude. I love Kenneth Walker. You're talking about you not being on your fantasy. I got him, too, on one in, my, in my waiver wires in fantasy football. Walker, dude, K-9 has been insane. Oh, my gosh. Ooh, this K-9. I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. K-9. That's sick. Yeah, K9. Let's go, K9 in the building. I love it, man. He's got the Cujos from Black Ops 2. Uh, I'm really leashed out. But on to the Patriots we go. New England, Bill Belichick. I despise you, Bill. Oh, I hate you, Marcus Jones. Screw you. That was one of the saddest things as a Jets fan watching that this week. Oh, my. I'm demoralized. And Zach Wilson couldn't throw it past like two yards this week. Oh, whatever. Uh, let's get on to this pick. Non biased. I'm not going to take like, uh, you know, Sika Ika or Blake Corum here at this pick, just even though I want to pick somebody. But anyway, New England, I think I'm going to go ahead and look at their receiver position. So interesting. I could add another playmaker in here. I think Jackson Smith and Chick though would be an awesome addition. They still need offensive line in a lot of ways. Maybe we don't go back to Georgia because Isaiah Wynn, whatever. I know there's a little bit of <laughs> bias and stuff like that. They need offensive tackle up so bad. Isaiah Wynn been benched on and off. Uh, you know, you had Yanni Kajus playing at right tackle this week, and it was a disaster. Michael Clemens was destroying whoever. I mean, even Michael Clemens was playing well. Bryce Huff had a beautiful sack. Like, everybody on the Jets team was just getting pressure on him. So I feel like we almost have to go to the offensive line. They need maybe some more edge pressure besides Matthew Judon. But I'm going to change it up this week because I've gone offensive line so many times. I'm going to go after Jackson Smith and Jig, but I love him. I think he's a great fit, and I think he'd be perfect here for the New England Patriots. Give Mac Jones some more targets. Mac Jones actually looked pretty good this week, especially considering the weather conditions. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we'll add another playmaker. And, I mean, he had Zach Wilson, you know, to kind of compare with. So, <laughs> I know. He looked like, a, he looked like a, you know, freaking 
Aaron Rodgers, prime Aaron Rodgers this week compared to Zach Wilson <laughs> out there. I'm like, oh my gosh, is prime Aaron Rodgers back? He's coming out here delivering these dimes over the field and rolling. But yeah, man, hopefully, hopefully Zach Wilson can play better than that. Only only way to go up from up there from there, I guess. But, oh yeah. yeah you now, know what will happen is he'll probably end up going to the Seahawks in a couple of years, and he'll look great. You know, after they let go of Geno Smith or something, Zach Wilson will go over to the Seahawks. <laughs> Pete Carroll will turn him in. They just finally really put it together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wild stuff. All right. Well, speaking of wild stuff, this one's gonna get wild. Uh, Cincinnati oh. Bengals. Uh, you would think kind of like Broderick Jones would be the no-brainer, but you know what? Ah, too easy. Too easy. Yeah. Now, shake it up. I am. I'm going to go Bijan Robinson. Oh, let's go. Bijan now, yeah, in the next two years with Joe Mixon, they're going to be paying over $13 million in 2023 and in 2024. They could cut about after this season, I believe the cap hit will be somewhere between 5 and $8 million, or it'll free, uh, free up that much. So it's like, Listen, you're paying a running back a lot of money, and you know what? Straight up, like offensive tackles, typically rookie ones, don't come in and contribute immediately. Typically, they get good during the last stretch of their rookie year, or you start to see it in year two. So I, I'm, I'm thinking I'd rather maybe go test that in um, free agency if you do want to like uh, improve off of uh, Jonah Williams or even Leo Collins, who's been really bad this year. Uh, oh, what's happened with him, man? Is it the injury? Like, just I think it's the injury. Back? That's what I'm thinking. I don't yeah. Know. Hopefully hopefully next year when he gets fully recovered. You know, oh, yeah. Same thing with Jonah Williams. Maybe just having a bit of a you know down year. Maybe you stick, like you said, stick him in the guard and then you draft a tackle potentially or pick somebody up in free agency. Yeah, exactly. Option. But yeah. On, dude. Bichon's that's nuts. An underrated pick. That is an underrated pick. Plus, you're losing uh, Tyler Boyd. So that's another weapon to into the offense because you can line up Bijan in the slot. You, you definitely you can. Mixon, you can roll with the – I mean, they probably wouldn't at that point, but you never know. Like, Bijan would be so much fun in that offense. Well, I mean, shoot, I we that. saw what? Uh, Samarja yesterday? Yeah, he ran three touchdowns. Not yesterday, right? the other day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Insane. So it's like – I don't know, man. Bijan's got to go somewhere in here, yeah. and I'm yeah. running out of places where to put him. <laughs> Dude, he's gonna go for like I think he's gonna go way earlier than like a lot of our mock drafts have. Bro, oh, he's such a good. Player. Typically, running back does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He is so talented too, and and his versatility as a receiver. He he reminds me like a, a modern day Emmett Smith. I don't know what about Bijan. There's just something there. I, he he's a really good player. If he can stay healthy, I think he's gonna be one of the best running backs for the next you know, seven plus years, but on to the Buffalo Bills, Buffalo Bill we go, and with the Buffalo Bills pick, this one is easy for me, offensive line, they need to continue to protect Josh Allen, it's been a problem all year, and you could even look at a right tackle, finding someone, and maybe Spencer Brown, maybe you move him into guard, I uh, he's probably more of a tackle with his overall traits, hopefully he can continue to develop and get better, I'm going to take Broderick Jones and put him in over at left guard, I think he'd be a nice put, put in spot in there, and you can always have him as a swing tackle early on, and maybe an eventual right tackle for you or something like that. But I think he can be a great guard early on in his career, and you can develop him from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of take the best offensive lineman available in a Broderick Jones. There we go. I like that. I like that. Jones. This That's one's a, cool a name, Broderick Jones. Broderick Jones is a cool Sounds name. Like a detective name or something. I don't know, but. All right, this one's a bit tough, man. This one's actually quite a bit tough. Uh, Baltimore Ravens, man. Honestly, they could just go best player available if they want to. They do every year, it seems like. And then they find, like, these unique fits. Like, Kyle yeah. Hansen, put them in that specific role. Like, they're, they're such a good drafting team. They're, they're really interesting. With their they players. are. They are. But I feel like the Achilles heel right now is the receiver position. It's just, is What? <laughs> Brad Pitt. I mean, he's like, oh yeah, <laughs> I got it. Oh uh, man, sorry. He's more of a <laughs> Troy guy, but uh, <laughs> but uh, stinking 
like, man, this receiver class, will there be another guy that emerges? Like, even Jackson Smith and the Jigba, I think, is a bit questionable just because hasn't been able to play this year. And you kind of know what he is. He's a slot guy through and through. So it's like Kayshawn Boutte, has he done enough to rehab that stock? Uh, do you feel good about a guy like maybe Josh Downs, who's a bit undersized? You kind of already have that guy on the roster uh, when it comes to uh, Devin DuVernay. Um and it's like, man, I'm I'm trying to talk myself into it, yeah. and I don't know if, if, if I. Quentin Johnson was here, it'd be easy. Like that's Oh yeah, easy picking. They could, yeah. I'm um, I'm right now trying tough. to talk myself into Jalen Hyatt, but I oh. don't believe he's a first rounder right now. Yeah, I really I, just I don't. Don't. He might go. He might go in the first round because like the dude. Teams are going to love, I mean, first off, the production this year, the speed is crazy. Oh, he You're flies. Gonna mold him with some, yeah, I know. You're going to need to give him some free releases because I think he could struggle a little bit early on off the line. But, you know, versus some of the press, you haven't really seen a whole ton of it at Tennessee, him playing in the slot and stuff. But dude has got, he, yeah, he flies. He goes. Yeah, <laughs> he does. But uh, I don't think, I really don't think I'm going to go there, though. Yeah, yeah understandable. <laughs> oh, but then, I mean, this begs the question, what? What to yeah. do? What to do? You do you take Kishon Boutte? I mean, do we project him even coming out? Like, it is so difficult. Oh, I think he comes out. I don't think he wants to be at LSU. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he probably will come out. And, you know, another thing is, like, he could also just be dealing with some of that injury things. He didn't really get much time in this offseason. You know, I'm not going to say excuses for the drops this year, but maybe it has to do with it. And there's a lot of controversy with things going on. So it, he could be a total, he could either be like the craziest wild card in this draft. I feel like he could be oh, like yeah, unbelievable definitely. or he could be a complete bust. Like that's kind of what you're getting with Keishon Boutte. So, All right. I, I, I think I've decided I'm going to just go with the safe, uh, more safer pick here with Isaiah Foskey, okay. uh, a guy who has a high, very high floor. He's got length. He uh, plays with some juice, uh, very good run defender uh, with a good good pass rush and upside if he could kind of just harness that. Uh, and, I mean, if anything, this just means, uh, guys, you could maybe event eventually move on. Someday you're going to have to move on from Justin Houston, uh, even though he's more of a rotation guy at this point. But also JPP has seen a lot of play. So get They've Boski. They've really been out with all those, those veterans out there with Houston and um, JPP, like they hopefully a job comes back here soon. He's or comes, he's supposed to come in like what the next week or so. He didn't play, yeah. Week, I think he's already been activated, uh, yeah, yeah. practicing. But yeah, I mean, even active. even then, you get Foski who has a very versatile body type, it doesn't oh, mean yeah. you can't have all like three because we haven't even talked about oh, Odafe Owe. It doesn't mean you can't have all three of those guys on the field at the same time, exactly. And they, they rotate those guys in oh, across the defensive line too. So Kwonski brings a lot of, I think that'd be, that'd be pretty solid for him. And some more line help there. But we go to the Titans of Tennessee. And I think this one for me, you were speaking of juice and uh, the juice is loose. I'm not talking about OJ Simpson, but oh, I gosh. do have a guy in mind. Hide your wives. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm watching out, but uh, I don't have a knife on me right now, but it's somewhere. Uh, hey, I am going does to not going... fit, cannot acquit. <laughs> Uh, get my lawyer on the phone. We'll make it real. I don't know. I got my lawyer somewhere out here. Um, I'm going to go after the offensive linemen are kind of picked at at this point. Antoine Harrison's pretty good. He's a borderline first rounder. I do think he's in that territory. I'm not going to take a guard at this moment. They do need offensive line help really bad. But I think I'm going to go with it's, it's between edge and receiver and offensive line for me for this Tennessee Titan team. They've actually gotten a lot of pressure on the quarterback. This year, now Bud Dupree is someone I'm probably looking to move on from after this offseason. Golly, please. I know. It's uh, that contract. I, I, uh, it it was the worst contract in that free agency. Yeah. Wait, was Kenny, Kenny Galladay in that one too? It was him and Kenny Galladay, right? Oh, yeah, uh, crap. Well, I mean, one. okay, let's be fair. I think Bud Dupree got like the six years, like oh, $84 yeah. billion. I mean, they probably. I think they get it out after this season. Maybe yeah, I don't maybe. know, but yeah, no. they they can cut him and only save. They can save a lot. They can save like over fifteen mil or something. I forget what the number is, but they can save a big chunk of money. So I'm gonna take a man. It is tough. There's some good edge players here. Jared Verse, really good. Andre Carter, Lucas Van Nesh. Man, have you, have you? I know you've been talking about Lucas Van Nesh. I like Lucas Van Nesh a ton, man. That guy's like you know. 
I know what Dane Brugler called him the grizzly bear, right? And I think you're yeah. you him the grizzly bear. He That's where really I got it from. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah, he rushes like a freaking grizzly bear, man. He's got. So He's violent and stuff. strong, yeah. dude. I know, dude. I love the way he rushes, and he was just destroying Wisconsin. The other week, and he's been really good. I do like him a lot. I think he, if he does come out, he comes out and he makes it into the first round. Yeah. I, it's a tough one, man. I, I want to get another receiver, another weapon. Their offense has just been kind of, but that could be maybe more towards the offensive line, just continuing to prove there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back towards the edge position here, and I actually am going to take Lucas Van Nash. I think he'd be a great combination i want to switch it up a little bit you know i go receiver i go offensive line so much i want to go after an edge rusher lucas van nash a guy i really really do like if he does come out yeah he's a young player a redshirt sophomore but the dude would be a great combination with harold landry that speed and then the power combination that they could bring you know maybe a little bit not quite the scheme fit per se but i think they can utilize him as well as a uh, like a five tag because he even lined up over as a five tech, you know, throughout his time there at, at Iowa. He's lined up and on the inside as well, so you can kind of get creative with Lucas, and I, you know, think he can stand up too. So work out, Lucas Van Nesh. Sounds like the Loch Ness monster. I don't know something. Right, like that. dude. That's a, yeah, uh, he could get some commercials there. There you go, man. And I uh, deals if he does come back. <laughs> So uh, Dallas Cowboys, I'm actually going to go with Brian Branch. I think he's just too good to pass up. A guy that uh, you can have him play in the slot. He could also play uh, deep. He really can do whatever you want him to. He's the best run uh, defender at the safety position. Uh, I think arguably in the defensive backfield. So you can do a lot of different things for this Cowboys secondary. And just right now, uh, that's just where the value's at. Brian Branch is, I think, my... Um, Best player currently still on the board. Yeah, he's unbelievable. I mean, dude doesn't miss very many tackles. Smooth in coverage. Great player. And uh, Giants, the G-men on the clock. Beginning at 28 overall still. Oh, my gosh. That's wild. They're still picking here. It's uh, they're, they're been a big surprise. But let's go ahead. I'm going to take a receiver. This is easy for me. And I'm going to take a wild card chance on Keishon Boutte. Brian Dables always seemed to figure it. I don't know. He's got some magic there. They need receiver. Keyshawn Boutte. I'm shooting for the moon, man. I know they're at the moon right now or whatever with the space shuttle. So why not? Go <laughs> Keyshawn Boutte. <laughs> they're doing some research project or whatever. I don't know. They're doing a 20-day mission. I can't wait. 2024. I'm trying to get in myself into the moon. I want to get to the moon one day. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, man. One of uh, these days. I'm, uh, I'm firmly a guy that will doesn't mind staying within... <laughs> his house <laughs> Staying on the ground see i'm scared of heights but it's like once you get up into space it's like you know you're kind of like so far beyond that it's like you know i'm okay at that point you i love really i i love heights the thing is with space so i i don't want to call it a fear but uh i adamantly hate the unknown right <laughs> so stuff you know, that i like can't yeah, stuff I can't Sigourney just take. Weaver could come after you. Yeah, you right. Know, aliens. <laughs> yeah, stuff I can't like account for. That's why I hate the ocean. Literally, you stuck out in the middle of the ocean, you can't see nothing below you, and there's things that are like thirty times bigger than you. And I'm already not that great of a swimmer, so I'm already gonna be battling for my life. You put me in space, ain't nothing but nothing. <laughs> And I'm just floating there, no control. Like, dude, I can't do that. Uh, what I can do, though, is I like that you went receiver because I think I'm going to do that for Minnesota. Get them another weapon, and I want to get them, especially with how uh, piss poor this offensive line played this past weekend. And to be fair, uh, a lot of that had to do with, well, even Christian Darisaw struggled early out the gates against yeah. the Dallas defense. But Get in maybe a playmaker that you get the ball too quick. That's a twitched up athlete. Great start stop ability and can create after the catch. I'm going to go with Josh Downs. Yes, let's go. I love Josh Downs, man. I think he's going to go in the first round. He's, dude, he reminds me like Marquise Brown in ways, maybe a little smaller and whatnot, but he is good at catching in traffic, even like when he's get his opportunities. Like he's good at locating the ball. Whereas the smaller receivers, like sometimes, will struggle with that. I feel like he's actually pretty good at it. So he's he does he plays like he's small, but he plays big. So I I love Josh Downs, man. Yeah, he's, he's a really good player. He's a guy that I have definitely come around to. Yeah, I think he's a real fun player. But uh, on yeah, I can't swim either though. Going back to that, I, <laughs> I 
I'm telling you, I'm so scared of the water. I don't I have, go anywhere. Near I have almost water. drowned three times. Yeah, yeah me too. I've <laughs> and in three times. different bodies of water, pool, yeah. lake, ocean. <laughs> See, I'm missing the lake. I've done the ocean and the, and the pool. I've almost drowned in both of those. But yeah, no, I feel you, man. And you never know, like when a shark, if there's a pool shark or something like that, you never know if somebody trains a shark in their Shoot. pool. Shoot, you dive even in though, and you're like, even, oh my even, gosh, why do you have a great white in your shark? You know, <laughs> or in your pool. Even even <laughs> even a stinking whale, dude. Just yeah, yeah. just a just whale like, feeling yeah. like it wants to come out of the water and just slams on you, <laughs> kills you instantly. Like, great, so, great. I, I literally died to just some whale out for a walk. I know this is the stuff that gives me nightmares, but. Uh, <laughs> On to the Kansas City Chiefs. We go and with the Kansas City Chiefs. For me, it's either adding more pass rush or adding some maybe a, a tackle because the unknown with Orlando Brown. Also, Andrew Wiley being a free agent. You're probably not going to look to re-sign him long term. Interior's looking really good. And cornerback's looking fine. Legereus Sneed, you can work that out. Maybe figure someone else out there. But I am going to see who the best available. You still have Jared Verse. Oh, I love Jared Verse. I know he's a little bit smaller in a spag scheme. Oh, he, he got up to uh, 250. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay, 250. Dude, yeah. he's been playing good, too, pass over these past couple of weeks. He's been starting to get rolling again, get going. So Yeah, after the injury, he's, I think he finally yeah. looks healthy again. He's going to test out the Wazoo. I think he's going to be like a low 4-5 yeah, guy, and his, his explosive drills are going to be nuts. Dude, and on top of that, he's stupid strong. Yeah, he is, man. He really is. So he can hold the point of attack. He's not a liability in the run game. So I, you know, you're you're talking. I mean, I was already kind of gushing, and now I'm like, you know, I'm not gonna take this guy, man. Jared Verse. It was between him and Antoine Harrison. I'm gonna go ahead and take your, uh, Jared Verse here, and uh, get some more edge talent to go along with George. Car I think it's a good pairing too with Carl Loftus. Yeah. Ooh, we got the ambulance coming by. Uh oh, somebody in trouble. Hopefully everyone's okay. It's ringing over here, but uh, we got the Eagles. The Eagles. Darius Slay is getting up there in years. Uh, James Bradbury is a free agent after this season. And honestly, my next best corner on the board, not a great scheme fit, Clark Phillips. So instead, I'm going to go with the current holder, leader, record setter of pick sixes oh. in college football, Emmanuel oh, Forbes. Let's go. I didn't expect that one at all. <laughs> Dude, Emmanuel <laughs> Forbes is nuts. Uh, I know he comes from a more like he's got a more uh, zone diverse background, but I mean with his length, because uh, the Eagles they 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 went from a cover three heavy team to a team playing more man, but I feel like with the current like with how your core position might change up next year, I think Gannon would be fine enough maybe moving back to a cover three or even maybe changing all together, but. Yeah, dude, Forbes, man, is just freaking nice. He's got great length. I think he's a guy you, you'd want to put in press. He's also one of the better run defenders in this draft from the corner position. So, yeah. side me dude, up. He, he's unbelievable as a playmaker, man. Like, you, oh my gosh. It's just wild that he sets the record. And, yeah, he's, he's going to be a good player, man. He is unbelievable. He's one of those guys you just like, you know, he's going to be a good football player. You know what I mean? He's just, oh, he's yeah. got everything. He's just going to be a good player. So, but that is the it for the first, there is it for this draft, this 2023 NFL mock draft. And, uh, you know, gotta let me know what you think. Broshmo rocking out. Dude, I, man, it was a lot of fun, man. And, uh, We'll have to, you know, keep the Moby Dick. Watch out for the ocean. Uh, all, that, all that crazy stuff's got me going. You never know. But uh, anyway, anything you want to say? Make sure, you know, obviously everybody knows about Brochmo and all that stuff. So uh, any, any last words here before uh, we let you go and all that? Uh, yeah, no, I really like how the strap shook up. Like there was a lot of, a lot of different picks experimented with a lot of different possibilities uh, that were reasonable. And I like that there were, we we saw some new names in here that you don't typically see, and I thought they all made sense. So I thought we had a lot of fun with this one. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I thought it was pretty crazy. I I mean, obviously, there's no disputing number one overall pick, and you know some of these top four picks. But after that, you know, there's gonna be some you know a lot of people with different players on the board that's gonna kind of shake up fun, and I think it's gonna get interesting after that. With even you know when we get into the real draft with trades and possibility who's gonna go after where. So really, really fun. But uh, anyway, man, I uh, I've had a lot of fun. Man. Hopefully, uh, hopefully things going well, and uh, you know, hope you guys everyone enjoyed out there rocking it out. Make sure and uh, 
go do all the fun stuff out there. Have some fun today. My name's G Sling. You got Broshmo. Oh, also, you know Broshmo, he's got the best intro. You guys say, yo, Broshmo, just in case you didn't know. So I think he should also have like, uh, you know, one of those French horns or, you know, the Colosseum, like the, oh, like the Roman Colosseum. You know what I'm saying? Like he should, like, every time he says that or every time you come in, him and Gojo, like it, you have like this Colosseum horn. So you could like, almost you could like, Hire someone. Yeah, it's worth the fifty thousand dollars to pay them to have someone every time you do a draft pick or something. They like ring the horn, or every time you say Broshmo, it's let's go. You know what I'm saying? You could have like someone have ringing the horn for you. But uh, no, you guys. Also, it doesn't cost now. fifty thousand. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What are those storm? You know the people who stand out of London Yard. Are they like stormtroopers or what? What do you know what they're called? They stand out. The, the guy building. with the uh, the furry yeah, hats. Yeah, those people. Yeah. I don't know what they're called. You I... one of those guys. <laughs> you oh. You got... <laughs> I'll just get a cardboard cut out. <laughs> That would actually scare me at night. Oh my gosh! If that, you know, if you had to wake up next to that thing or something like that. Oh my gosh! But, <laughs> oh, anyway, it's alright. I'll keep it going. Anyway, I hope everyone has a really good day and everything like that. And uh, my name is Sling. I'm doing my thing. Broshmo's dope. Have a good day. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Later.